Medfield TV, community shows. Welcome to the, see the newest adventure in uh, happenings in Midfield. And these happenings happen to be Girl Scouts. So it was the 100th anniversary of Girl Scouts in Medfield recently. There was a little dedication ceremony down at the, next to the library. And I asked uh, Jeanette and Catherine if they would come and talk about, number one, how they became Girl Scouts and what they got out of Girl Scouts. That's more important than what they gave, I think, but what they got out and uh, see what happens. So this is Catherine, and you are who? Catherine who? So my, uh, I'm Catherine Steger, and I've been, it, I've been a Girl Scout actually since I was seven. And I started as a brownie. Where? In, I grew up in Westchester County in New York, and uh, my first um, adventure as a brownie Girl Scout was walking in the Memorial Day Parade, in the Larchmont <laughs> Memorial Day Parade. And um, that was, I remember my, in fact, I still have a picture, I have a picture of it, in my brown, uniform with my little, because they used to wear beanies, and um, my brown knee highs, and it was just, <laughs> and my grandmother, who was my inspiration for being involved in Girl Scouts, she was the head of Buffalo, New York Girl Scouts, and so when I came along, I was the first granddaughter, and um, so, you know, she introduced me to Girl Scouts, so and there it goes. she was there marching alongside of the troop as we That's were, nice. so it was, it was great, so, and I have, I continued uh, with my Girl Scouting myself through um, middle school. And then um, when I, I have two daughters and my youngest, when she was in uh, first grade, decided she wanted to also try Scouts. And I thought, oh, well, this will be great. And I signed up as a leader. And I've been involved with Medfield Girl Scouts for the last 15 years. And it's just been fabulous working with the girls and all of the adults. And, you know, it's been terrific so how about you Jeanette how'd you get started I have a very different story than Catherine so <laughs> oh, how about your whole, first, <laughs> whole, whole name first though um, Jeanette Hassapitas uh, from Medfield um, so I remember being in first grade I lived in Quincy at the time uh, and I was a brownie with some of my neighborhood girlfriends and one of the neighborhood moms was our troop leader and it was just that one year I remember selling cookies I do not recall marching in a parade mm -hmm. Um, I do remember something that we did for the 4th of July, but it was, it's very, <laughs> very limited. And then it never formulated, nothing ever came of that. Oh, that's and so then bad. I have a daughter who is currently, she's 12 years old in 6th grade, and in 1st grade she wanted to become a daisy because everyone she knew was a daisy. It's, it was like everyone in this class was a daisy. Um, so I went to sign her up and there was no more spots, and so I volunteered to become a leader. And I've been doing it for 6 years, yeah, and it's been wonderful. That's how I got involved in Medfield. I started in Girl Scouts um, during World War II, mm -hmm. and none of our mothers would be leaders. I don't know why, but they wouldn't. <laughs> so the minister, we were all in, in Catholic school. The, uh, the minister's wife up the street said she would take a Girl Scout troop on, even though she didn't have a girl the right age. She had three little kids. So when Mrs. Gretz took it on and took all these Catholic school <laughs> girls into her house and did a Girl Scout troop for years, years and years. Yeah. She was absolutely wonderful. So as we got older, we always volunteered to babysit for free. I was always embarrassed that our mothers wouldn't do it. I really felt bad. So I thought, when my time comes, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. When we moved here, um, I had just had my fifth child, was just having my fifth child, and uh, my daughter wanted to be in a troop. And so I called the Girl Scout leader, and they said, well, we don't have enough leaders. But there's another lady who moved from out of state, and um, she's interested, so they put us together. Neither of us knew anything about Medfield. We didn't know New England. We didn't know anything <laughs> about what was going on. And Jean Dumbo turned out to be one of my best friends ever. And the best part about it, Jean, because you get something more out of Girl Scouts than you expect, mm -hmm. Jean lived on Kenny Road, and they only had seven people in their neighborhood to play bridge. She asked me if I played bridge, and I said, yeah. And she said, well, we need an eighth person in our neighborhood. So I joined Kenny Road Bridge Club. I still play with the Kenny Road people to this day, 50-some <laughs> years later. I never expected something like that to come out of Girl Scouts. Now, didn't you get some unexpected benefits from this? Like, yes. what did you get that you didn't expect? Um, well, well the, the women that I've met who I have had passed in passing with the schools and such, but we became some really, really close friends. Um, I can remember one instance 
where we were encampment. It was our first encampment, so it was fourth grade. So the moms didn't know exactly what to expect, but we were <laughs> ready for it. We prepared ourselves <laughs> as best as could be. And the first night of encampment, the girls are all excited. They don't sleep, and it's a right. little bit chaotic, and you're trying to control them. And then the second night, the girls are just plain exhausted. <laughs> so they yeah, just, they settle down. They're all good. Well, the moms were in our tent, um, and we had girls on either side of us, and the girls across the way. The moms, I don't remember what set us off, but we got into such a giggle fit. <laughs> I, I, and I was, the, I was the biggest culprit, and I just couldn't control it. And we got the whole tent going. Um, <laughs> it was so fun. And then we had the girls who were trying to sleep, telling us, to, yelling at us, to, be, to quiet. be quiet. <laughs> we're trying to sleep. Oh, I love you that. Know? It's past 10 o'clock. It's quiet hours. <laughs> Um, and that, that was just the first one of, of many times. Um, we also took uh, last year, our fifth grade troop at the time, we took them camping just as our troop. So outside of encampment or spinoff or anything. Um, and it was some of the funniest moments. I, I really wish we, we had said no electronics, but I really wish I had taken my video camera because the girls were trying, they were gonna set up their own tents because we brought our own tents. They didn't need the instructions <laughs> because there's a couple of girls who had done this before. And we had three tents. We had three campsites. Um, and it was some of the, f the funniest times. The girls just bond. They were, they've been together since they were first graders. But this was a sort of an adult bonding moment because mm -hmm, they sure. were going to set up those campsites. And eventually some of the moms had to come help. But it was, it was they were ready to take it on. They were, you know, had graduated and they were, they were ready to go. And cooking, outdoor cooking, oh, I'm sure you have fun. a lot of stories to tell. S'mores. Down. Everybody would talk about s'mores. <laughs> s'mores. Well, we took it to the next level. I have um, a mom in our troop who is very, very involved, and she loves cooking. And she took on the outdoor cooking component, which she hadn't, um, she had done as a family in uh, camping, but she really wanted to have the girls have this amazing experience. So she spent weeks. She did the box ovens. Mm, that was she um, so we made out we made pizzas in the box ovens. The girls did. Um, they made their own hot chocolate over a special gas. Oh my heavens! Mm. Um, <laughs> and the morning we had pancakes that the girls made and over the fire and um, it was it was great. So it was a it was a beautiful way to end. Um, you know, coming from the younger troop into the seven four nine hundred, which is Medfield's older scout troop, which is grade six and above. So mm -hmm. it was, they bonded really well. Well, and I think that's the great thing about not only for the adults, but for the girls is that really, um, you know, progressing them through the different experiences and gaining more confidence in doing things like that. And to me, it's just so wonderful to see girls have the opportunity to take on those leadership positions mm -hmm. and think about, you know, what do I want to do and how do I want to make this work? And we really do try to give them the opportunity here in the Medfield um, service unit to give them those opportunities, sure. whether it's camping or um, earning their, you know, silver, bronze, gold awards, things like that. And, and I think the parents, the moms, and the dads. We have a lot, a lot of dads, dads involved, involved too, which mm -hmm. is great. It, it, it didn't end my day. You yeah, do, you I, do well, have dads? It's, it's been really terrific. We do the father-daughter dance. Well, yeah, um, we did that. Um, which is great to see the dads come out and really get involved in the boo bowling. They come out for that, the do, the, the do dad boo bowling. Oh, that's great. Um, but I think we've gotten them involved in encampment. And the, one like of the it. stories, <laughs> I like this, it, it was <laughs> great. <laughs> Mike Drum. Um, he came this past year, and we have this skit. I don't know if you ever did this. It's called The Seven Old Ladies, and it's this <laughs> great <laughs> skit, um, and the kids don't know that the adults are going to put this on, and we get all dressed up in um, uh, clothing, you know, make ourselves look like the seven old ladies, mm -hmm. and this year, Mike Drum dressed up <laughs> as one of the old ladies, and the girls just thought that was the funniest thing. It was That's so wonderful. unexpected. Yeah, the it was skit. So, unexpected. It, it, so all, out he comes, and he's all hunched over, and it turns out that it's Mike. So, um, and then we actually had yeah. uh, one of the moms actually play an played one of the old, old uh, one of the old men. Yeah. So it <laughs> Perfect. was Perfect. Yeah. I've it never Mike met Mike Br Drum, but I know him already. I like him already. Yeah. Oh, he's such a great guy. He's such a I think that's fantastic. And we've had, we have actually in the older scout troop, um, we have something called the Green Knights. And every year we recognize some of the dads that have really stepped oh, up and the, helped that's out. Really nifty. And so my husband always says to me, so do you need the Green Knight today? <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever we're doing troop meetings and things like that. But it's great to, um, you know, uh, um, 
we have some dads that are very good, or Boy Scout dads that have mm -hmm. come in to help with teaching the kids about orienteering and uh, canoeing and mm. things. So we really try to get that um, you know connection. It's been great over the last five or six years to incorporate the dads, and I think they really enjoy being involved. I like involved. it very much. Um, Do you coordinate efforts with any of the Boy Scout troops as well? Yes, we, we actually, the, the service projects, we've done some group service projects. And there's one, if you don't mind me answering, that no. really comes to mind because it was, um, my troop at the time was in second grade, and they embraced this like I've never seen them embrace anything, and it was the Boy Scouts were collecting the school supplies, so oh, the yeah. backpacks yes. and the school supplies, and Catherine Lyons, who was our service coordinator at the time, asked if the Girl Scouts could join it, so we did it as a Boy Scout, Girl Scout event, which in and of itself was amazing. Yeah, it is. And so these, each troop was asked to, if they wanted to participate, get a backpack and fill it with school supplies, and it was going to be brought to um, homeless children. Schools on school, wheels. Schools on wheels, yeah, right? Schools on wheels. Um, and so we at first had to talk to these, my second graders about children who don't have school supplies every year they get to go and I'm sure they get to you know pick out new pencils and pens and a new backpack and that there's children out there who don't have that opportunity they mm -hmm. can't afford it and the faces of the girls were just what do you mean what, what do you mean they just it was eye-opening for them and they embraced it we ended up filling two backpacks I mean stuffing two backpacks and then we had another box of supplies um, because they went out and they talked to their neighbors about it and they went home and talked to their moms about yeah. it and they used their uh, allowance money to go shopping at Staples for these things. So And then the um, Cub Scouts got... The Cub Scouts got... Yeah. Your, Jeanette's also a den or your... My husband is. Husband yeah. is. Yeah. So we got the boy, the Cub Scouts involved and that was that was great. We connect, collected a lot and then... Um, the Boy Scouts and the uh, Girl Scouts, we did a cleanup at Vine Lake Cemetery right before um, Patriots Day. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the girls, they really enjoyed working together. Um, and we did a cleanup over at uh, Hinkley Pond too. So we've really tried to, where we can, um, join efforts yeah. together. They're good projects. Yeah, they were really good projects, mm -hmm. very good projects. And I think that it gives, again, you know, Jeanette talked about cookies earlier, um, being <laughs> a cookie mom. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of times people perceive Girl Scouts as just cookies, selling cookies, but it really is so much more. You know, and we talk about the three C's of instilling courage, confidence, and um, I'm forgetting the third one right now, courage, confidence, and... Um, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> but um, I think that's one of the things that... Community service? Uh, courage, confidence, and mm -hmm. oh, it'll come to me. Yeah. <laughs> Senior brain. Um, <laughs> But I you, just are think you one of those seven old ladies yeah. that we're talking about. <laughs> I'm one. Of, I'm one. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that it really, you know, the, the Girl Scout experience has gives the girls an opportunity to really take on so many new experiences that they wouldn't try, um, like rock climbing, like camping, and canoeing, um, canoeing, <laughs> canoeing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great for the adults, the adult volunteers to be there to help mentor them and then going back to your point earlier of us forming our own relationships and um, really coming together to provide this experience for the girls and you know becoming friends over the years and um, and when you go through camping for two nights and um, you're up to all hours in the morning and you know it, it really does form mm -hmm. a bond and um, we have 16 graduating 12th graders this year mm -hmm. and those moms have been together since the girls were daisies wow. And it's just, you know, when we all, when they um, bridged in March and got their awards, it was very emotional for all of us mm -hmm. because we've been there together for um, so long. So I, I it's just, it's a great experience here in Medfield. And we have such a rich history of it too, as you know, sure. because you've been a part of that history. Um, celebrating our 100th was really a huge. Well, I'm not quite 100 yet. But no, <laughs> but you knew, but you knew one of our founding, <coughs> founding uh, Captain Bing and, um, as, as we, for our 100th, as you know, we created this uh, fabulous book that um, really recounts the history, the rich history that we have. And um, the tent, uh, the camping that we, uh, these two women created off of White Street. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just over the last 10 decades, the, really what's kept Medfield Girl Scouts um, the making it the service unit that it is is the volunteers you know and it's that those connections with those women um wanting to provide i think 
Christmas opportunity for the girls. And the first Girl Scout troop here was Red Rose? The Red Rose. Number Rose. one? The Red and Rose. And when I was a scout leader in 1965, my troop number was 107. Oh, really? Okay, now what are they today? What are the numbers today? Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're five dig digits. So seven. Five digits? Well, seven, seven, four, four nine hundred. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, Mrs. Bing, look what you did. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we have not only are we one of the oldest service units in the country, but we're one of the Biggest. largest in Massachusetts, correct? Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. As far as how many girls we have registered. In, um, and I think that was one of the things that at our 100th last week, Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts noted that of all of the girls in school, the number of kid girls that are registered as Girl Scouts is over 35 percent 35 percent that's all that's i wonder what it was in our day nothing like that i'm sure yeah yeah we have almost 350 girls registered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and almost 280 adults as volunteers so that mm -hmm. just shows you how many adults are right and mrs bing who stayed in it all those years didn't have any children of her own she was a widow in the war early um, so she never had any children at all and she still stayed with girl scouts it's right. amazing yes <laughs> she yes. let us use her yard her house anything we wanted we she would do it. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that I found is that we all really do so much because we want to provide the opportunities to the girls to just, you know, be as, as uh, adventurous and take on uh, chances and mm -hmm. um, really develop themselves as human beings, which is, I think, one of the really um, key things that Girl Scouts offers that they don't really have the opportunity to do. Um, oh, outside of Girl Scouts. They can just, you know, really explore and, um, in fact, of our, we have eight 11th graders and of the eight, I think five of them were selected to go to the state, um, for the state government uh, conference that mm -hmm. they do. Um, so, you know, again, they wanted to take on their leadership. So the very best thing you got from being a Girl Scout and the best thing you got from being a leader? What would what they be, Jan Jeanette? Oh, watching, well, I, I just have my one daughter, but watching this group of kindergartners turn into wonderful teenagers. Um, the experiences, the bonds that they had, seeing them when they had to come together to make a decision um, as the way that I handle my troop is I always try to give them options and let the girls come to their own decision, kind of negotiate. Um, and some of those were interesting, um, but they did that. So just seeing them be able to come into their own and have their own thoughts and be able to express those uh, and work things out is wonderful. Um, and they're all just great girls, just amazing commu community members. Um, something that, so watching them grow up was, it was great. Um, something that I got out of it for myself um, I would have to say the, probably the bonds with the other women who I've mm -hmm. had the pleasure to be in Girl Scouts with. Um, 74900 was always there to support the younger troops as we were learning our way. Um, as I said, I just signed up one day. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, there is some administrative work that you need to do, trainings that you need to do. So it was, um, but 74900 in the and the, um, the Medfield Girl Scout uh, Service Unit was always there, especially Linda Frawley. Mm. We she's, can't, she's a staple mm. of Medfield Girl Scouts. Um, and so it was, uh, she actually helped me a lot. Mm. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Yes. So it's, um, great. Yeah, it's the bonds with the children, watching them grow up, coming into their own, and it's the, um, the wonderful women who make up Medfield Girl Scouts, and they just do so much throughout the community. So that's. Well, and I think. Um, for, for me too, I just got an email actually from um, Emily O'Connell who was um, in the Older Scout troop. Uh, she's been graduated now almost, uh, I think, six years. So she emailed me this week and she asked me if I would be a reference for her because she's applying for a job at Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts. Oh, really? Wow. really? So, yeah. So, and Emily, you know, she, um, she was amazing when she was here as a Girl Scout. She earned a gold award. She always took on troop leadership positions, um, worked with the younger girls, was a fabulous mentor to the girls, went on to um, Stonehill and then BU. Fabulous um, 
got her master's at BU, um, was a teaching assistant I've heard, was phenomenal doing that, and now she's looking at going into um, working at Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts That's in great. the prom uh, promotion marketing, um, you know, working to get the message out about Girl Scouts because it was that important to her. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so those are the things that, you know, when you hear that, um, and we have girls coming back all the time to the older scout troop that, you know, have graduated from yeah. college. And Susan Hurley, he actually, another contemporary of um, Emily O'Connell, um, helped one of our present eighth graders earn her silver award. She wanted to do a project on her own, and we just didn't have the adult um, volunteers to separate because we had 11 kids wanting to do their silver award. And the thought occurred to me, Susan had just graduated um, with her education degree, and I knew she was working here mm -hmm. in um, Medfield uh, substituting, and I reached out to her and said, would you possibly be available to help mentor um, the Silver Award project? And she took it up, and the scout just got her Silver Award this past yeah. week at Bridging. So those are the things, the connections, not only do we form them as um, the adults, but the girls really have a connection mm -hmm. too. And um, Another great example of the connections is so as, as third graders, they mm -hmm. go away camping in cabins, uh, usually up in the Waltham Cedar Hill facility, and that's their spin-off because they're graduating up. And the fifth graders, who are also bridging up at that year, they usually go down the first evening. Well, there is only one evening right. at spin-off. They go down for the evening ceremonies, um, and they work with the third graders to do a formal ceremony. Oh, that's great. They yeah. do. They teach them songs. They do. They help them with the s'mores, and so it's that, you know, p helping helping the younger ones and the younger ones learning from the older ones. So that's just one example of, of how mm. the girls uh -huh. really do connect. And certainly 74900 that you and Linda and the rest of the 12th grade moms, right, started. Well, actually, it was Joanne O'Connell, Emily's mom, um, was yes. your job service unit manager uh, nine years ago. And we had a lot of smaller troops from 6th grade to 12th grade, twos and threes. and. Um, Joanne's daughters were getting ready to move into that age bracket. And we really, we were trying to think of how to make it a more meaningful experience to sure. keep the girls longer. Um, and Joanne went and met with Wellesley Girl Scouts. They had an older scout troop, which was multi-aged. And um, the model is, to your point, about you know having the older ones mentor the younger mm -hmm. ones. And so we thought we'd try it. And um, we did uh, the first year, and it, you know, we started off, I think we had about 35 scouts, and then we had 45 <laughs> and 65, and today we have 108 girls in sixth through 12th grade. Wow. So it's been, you know, mm -hmm. it's been a great experience for them, I think, um, because obviously with the numbers continuing to grow, and it's been fabulous for the adults because we can work with each other mm -hmm. across, again, mm -hmm. age groups, um, and it really gives the kids a terrific opportunity to mentor one another. Sure. And it, I think it keeps them, we have, um, you know, secretly they'll see each other in school and they don't necessarily want to acknowledge the fact that they're Girl Scouts <laughs> because I think they get a little ribbing about being a Girl Scout. Oh, really? But they'll know, you know, they'll see each other. And, <laughs> and the Share Our Service, which is the shirt you have on right now, is another great, um, you know, started by one of our scouts as a gold award um, and we've continued to foster that and you know we do service projects as Jeanette said around town for the um, Thomas Upham House mm -hmm. for the Council on Aging um, we the last year we had seven gold awards um, that did various things for the Medfield community but also the Boston and um, greater community so mm -hmm. it really gives them so many chances to um, explore different. And we had the two full days of service um, yes. when uh, Girl Scouts USA turned 100 a few years ago. And then this past year for our 100th, we took a whole Saturday and we had a committees that would pick um, uh, community service events all around town and we would have the troops sign up for it. So it was a seven, six or seven hour mm -hmm. event where you would see Girl Scouts in all aspects of community service throughout throughout Medfield. There was uh, events at the library happening, mm -hmm. there was stuff the truck for Cradles to Crayon, mm -hmm. there was a, a food drive mm -hmm. for the pantry, um, there was collecting costumes for the, um, the, the food pantry for the Halloween costumes. 
Um, there was yard work that was being done, cleanup at the parks. Um, at the FAFS Center we set up and we had, uh, for the younger troops who were probably too young to be out helping in the, in the community, they were writing cards for the veterans, they were um, just doing all, all sorts of things. And so we had almost, a, I think we had 85% participation wow. in one day by Medfield That's Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. So they were everywhere and they were doing all sorts of things. Did they wear things. uniforms during all this? So they didn't know what they yes. are? Okay. And we actually had new, we had um, new share our service. They were okay. the light blue this year. Mm -hmm. And there so was 100 did. minutes of service for 100 years of scouting. Yeah. And then we ended it with a bonfire, bonfire and um, and desserts and s'mores up at. Um, it had to be s'mores. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. <laughs> Always has to be. Even if it's cold s'mores, <laughs> even if we can't still get good. a fire, <laughs> we still bring the graham crackers and the marshmallows <laughs> and the chocolate, and they'll take it like that too, even yeah. if they're not. Milk. I'm sure they would. <laughs> it's just part of Girl Scouts, I think. Just like cookies are. Yeah. Right. Just like. Yeah. Cookies, right. Yeah. Cookies. I, I always avoided Cookie Mom. I hated to handle all that money. I didn't want any part of Cookie Mom. I didn't mind. I like being a Girl Scout leader, but I did not want to be Cookie Mom. And we found I found that a hard job to give away. People didn't want to do it. Really? Oh, yeah. We had people volunteer for it. The first year I, I did it, I was also the leader and, and I did it. And um, we had the cookie, the huge truck comes to Medfield. They used to drop off at Wills and we had it run like a well oiled machine, pick up time, sort. People were behind the scenes sorting. And so I got filled up my minivan with all my cookies, got them all laid out in my house while the children were at school, sorted them um, by, um, by type of cookie. And my son came home, <laughs> kindergartner at the time, I think, or preschool, and he walked in at, to the den and his eyes were just like, wow. I've died and gone to cookie heaven. <laughs> he was just what like, a good mom. He thought that they were all for him. <laughs> he was a little heartbroken when I told him, no, these boxes are for home, but um, it was pretty, it was funny. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, speaking when you you're, when you mentioned the truck, I, I, I mean we've sold upwards of eighteen thousand boxes of cookies just here in Medfield. Yeah, so when they come in, yeah. they come in with a tra literally a tractor trailer sure, truck sure. backs up to mm -hmm. to Wills and and drops them off. So um, the girls really, and I think that's another. Although people think you know cookie selling, but it really gives them the opportunity to. Um, you know, present themselves mm -hmm. and, you know, they have to, we typically they'll sometimes set up at Shaw's or outside in front of Starbucks now these days or at the library and it really does, they love being able to do that, you know, and um, keep track of how much they've sold and, and handle um, the money handle and do the, the money, math. There's right. so many aspects that you can incorporate sure. into it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then if they're um, raising their money for either their journey or for their uh, bronze, silver or gold awards, it's okay, so taking that concept home is what do you want to do as part of your journey? What are the materials you need to do that and how much do they cost? And then figuring out what their goal is for the various mm -hmm. cookie fundraisers. So it's, there's definitely education that you can mm -hmm. incorporate in there that's subtle. Mm -hmm. and, and in the older scout troop, we try to give the kids, uh, the girls, opportunities to manage projects. Um, so for instance, the holiday parade that we do with Memo, um, you know, that is something that typically one of the older girls will take on and actually run, you know, be in charge of picking out the badges. How much is it going to cost? How many troops do we have? Assigning how the troop is going, the troops are going to march. So giving them those opportunities can translate later to skills, you know, when they get out and have jobs and things. Mm -hmm. And I think it really serves them well and take positions. A lot of our um, scouts are also in leadership at school, you know, they'll be on the student council or things like that. So it really, the, um, you know, the crossover is, is really the opportunities to do so many different things, as I said, I think is one of the other great things about Scouts. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole process is fun. <clears throat> My favorite camping story, I think I told you guys before, um, I was pregnant with a sixth kid and it was a fall, fall camp out. Uh, I can't remember what field, what campgrounds we were on. But Gene Dumble and I, it was back then it was just the two leaders did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were there, we had, <coughs> had the tents all set up, but it was started to rain while we were setting up the tents and it kept raining and raining and raining and rained that whole night. Oh, it was horrible, mm -hmm. the rain was horrible. So the kids are huddled in the tents and all of a sudden we hear somebody banging on the ceiling of the tent. Hello in there, are you from Edfield? And we looked out, it was our husbands with pizza and beer <laughs> and Coke. <laughs> And the kids said, Dad, <laughs> and the kids all came running up, so we all squeezed into one tent, and we had the pizza. They, the men were the biggest hit of the world when they got there. 
They so saved us. <laughs> it was really funny. So the second second night, it's, it kept raining all the next day, and the second night it rained again. And the men thought, gee, they're such a good hit. You know, that night they do it again. So they got some got some different stuff the second night. They came to the gate to get into the campgrounds, and they were stopped by the police. And they said, well, we're just here to visit our wives and give the kids some goodies. And they said, well, sorry, sir, but there were some crazy men going through the campgrounds <laughs> last night, and they scared all the campers. <laughs> They were denied access, <laughs> so we never got our second night. <laughs> but the kids loved that story. My daughter loved it. <laughs> it was such funny. It was just like my husband and John Dumble to do that. To show up. It so was a nice thing to do. There were green nights even back then. There were. I was going to say, yeah, there were green nights back then. <laughs> well, they performed call that. <laughs> Maybe they were just glad to get rid of us for a night. <laughs> well, it's funny when you said... Um, it made me think of another encampment story that, um, you know, when, when we go, we always tell the kids, don't bring any food. If you bring it, you know, for your toothpaste and toothbrush, yeah. put it in a Ziploc bag because there's you know, animals in the, out there and, you know, you don't want them coming into your tent looking for things. So no food in the backpacks. Everything stays yeah. in the cabin. Um, so <laughs> I remember it was two, three o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden we heard all of this screaming, 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 screaming. And it turned out that one of the moms had brought Oreo cookies <laughs> and didn't <laughs> think that it was really going to happen. And you know, the tents, they're platform tents, and into the tent had come a raccoon <laughs> who smelled- Who liked the, chocolate. Who liked chocolate. <laughs> and so th you could just hear the moms you know, they didn't. They just heard the animal oh, uh, enter the tent, oh, and uh, yeah. So that was. That's why we don't bring food. <laughs> that's why we have the men deliver them, that's right? Why. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think, you know, in all seriousness, it's so great for the girls to get that experience of whatever you know, camping, the rock climbing, things like that, and know that they can do it themselves. You're right. Um, and have fun. And have fun. have fun. And have fun and, you know, take and, and give them that opportunity to work out those things in a safe environment um, with other girls. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's the other terrific thing with Girl Scouts is it's girls just being girls. girls. Right. And, um, and then as they progress and become the teenagers and, um, and they still, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, especially today, I think, with so many different things that the kids do, you know, with sports and schoolwork and um, just all of their various commitments. So to be able to have as many kids still involved in the high school, middle school years, I think mm -hmm. is really a testament to what they'll do if they're given the opportunity to do it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think we're really fortunate here in Medfield that we have the adults that are willing to provide because if you don't have the volunteers to help, um, then you can't provide those opportunities yeah, for the girls. You're saying one after your daughter's already finished, correct? I have been. My um, my older daughter is th uh, graduating college now, and my younger daughter graduated. So I'm going to stay. You know, because again, you have to give everybody the opportunity to to take part in it because they get to see how great it is. So yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. stay on and work with the kids. My daughter um, Barbara stayed too. After and your daughter. daughter Barbara took yeah. on a trip. And That's Tanya right. did for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was great working with Tanya. Your, um, your daughter-in-law um, was on the service unit with mm -hmm. us for many oh, years. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to continue working as uh, with the girls on their silver gold award advising. Corinne de Betancourt's taking over the older scout troop and also Jeanette has been the service unit manager mm -hmm. for the last four years. Three years. Three years. Um, it seems like four though, right? <laughs> so will you stay on too, Jeanette, when your kids are older? Yeah, I'll stay on and help out in some capacity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, as you mentioned, Corinne's going to take over as service unit manager, um, and uh, I'll stay in the background, and if there's anything that they need, I'll be happy to help. Yeah, yep. and I think that's the thing is, you know, when, it was g when everything was given to us, I was the service unit manager myself nine, I don't even know, nine years ago, and, um, you know, the, the women that passed it down to us, just like Captain Bing, and, um, you know, we've, we continue to get new adult, new leaders to come in and mm -hmm. new volunteers, because that's how, that's why Medfield's been around as long as mm -hmm. it has, is because of the strength of its volunteers and bringing new, fresh, um, you know, thoughts and ideas, mm -hmm. and um, that's how it continues to grow yeah. and prosper. I hope it stays. I, think I really it will. do. I think it will. I think it will. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it goes to your point about the network of volunteers. And as the younger girls, those new daisies are coming on, there's the older troop AVGs or leaders that are there to help and support 
and um, and it, the web just keeps growing. So yeah. it's great. But it's and people like you that keep it going. And, and I'm really impressed that you've done such a good job. Mrs. Bean would be very proud, I think, <laughs> if she were here. She'd give you orders, because she always <laughs> told us what to do. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be really proud to know that what she helped start would, ha has been so successful for all those years. Well, and I think that's what's so great, too, is that we have, um, this is a book that the, uh, actually, the present 12th graders did for their Silver so Award. Um, when it was our 95th, and they went to the Historical Society. There were boxes and boxes of um, things about what Medfield Girl Scouts had done over the years, and they took it upon themselves to go through, and they created this history, and we're going to be updating it for our 100th mm -hmm. and adding in all the, the celebration from last week and the recognition of you, as well as um, uh, Denise Garlick, who we recognized. And so I think that's really important is that we've had the opportunity to preserve our history and really document it and pass it down to the, the girls. So, and we, as we said to the little daisies who were in the picture with you, your faces will be the ones that 50 years from now, <laughs> they'll, hopefully they'll, they'll somebody say, will be that, looking at. They'll say, that's my grandmother. <laughs> So we all grew up. <laughs> right, right. But thank you guys both very much for coming here and doing this today. That's great to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Girl Scouts in Medfield. Well, thank you I for having us. I think that's fantastic. So I know great. Linda wished she was here. Yes. I bet Linda probably too. But yes. yes, she's away in vacation. But And thank you too, Anne, for all you've done for Medfield Girl Scouts yes. because you have not only been, you know, as you said, the leader, but throughout your time as select woman, you're always there at our gold award ceremonies, coming to the Memorial Day parade with us and things like taught that. Taught knitting so for a lot of times. Taught knitting, you t and you taught the CPR class yeah, for the, the girls. Yeah, and that's getting, all part of, part of being a, a resident. Getting them their first aid badges and things yeah. like that. So thank you too well, for all the support. Oh, you're more than welcome. Was I enjoyed it more than, I got more out of Girl Scouts than I gave, believe me, after all those years. I got a lot more out of Girl Scouts mm -hmm. than I gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would I would absolutely agree with that because mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier there is some administrative work that you need to do mm -hmm. and some paperwork but in the end it's all worth it. That's You're right. Great. It's a great experience. Yeah, yeah and, and when I look at the 12th graders that just graduated, remembering what they were daisies and watching them through middle school and doing all that they did and you know of the 16 of them, eight of them earned their gold award so yep. it's a 50 percent um, average compared to a three percent on the national average of girls that are eligible that can go for their gold. And again, of those 16, 11 of them earned their national leadership pins. So, you know, when you see them do that, that is the, that's the payoff, you know, mm -hmm. that, you're, you, that you can be a part of that and, and, mm -hmm. and really see them grow and prosper. Wow. Well, all you at home that are watching this, thank you for watching Happenings in Medfield. And you know these big happenings are 100 years of Medfield Girl Scouts. And these are two women that helped to continue and I will help, will help it grow, I'm sure, in the future for my great-grandchildren. I have grandchildren in Medfield, no great-grandchildren here yet. <laughs> but you never know what's going to happen. But I very much appreciate what you've done. I really have. Thank and I appreciate you folks for staying home and listening and, and see whatever you can do to help the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. Thank you. Seating was a production of Medfield TV.